Are you telling me you use the internet every single day and you have no idea that there's a secret spooky version of it out there where your personal information goes to live a second life without you? Today, I'll explain how hackers sell breach data on the dark web to you like you're five years old. And by the end of this, you'll understand the entire shady journey that your poor stolen password takes from your computer to a stranger's shopping cart. Now, let's start with a very simple idea. The internet is like a giant ocean. Now, the part that you use every single day with all the news websites, the video streaming, and social media, it's the surface of the ocean. You can see everything. I mean, everyone can see it and it's easy to get to. It's sunny and there are lots of happy fish swimming around. But there are parts of the internet that you can't see by just looking. And this isn't just your email inbox, which is more like a private swimming pool. No, we're talking about something deeper and much more hidden. This hidden part is called the dark web. It's like the very, very bottom of the ocean where the weird fish with their own little headlights live. You can't just swim down there, you need a special submarine to get there, and it's designed to be super secret. Nobody knows who's driving which submarine. And this secret submarine is a special web browser that lets people visit the dark web without anyone knowing who they are or where they're from. So, the dark web is just a secret part of the internet where people go to be anonymous. It's a place for hide and seek, but for grown-ups who are usually up to no good. Now, let's talk about the hackers. A hacker is like a sneaky raccoon who wants to get into your house to steal your snacks. Your information, like your name, your email address, your password, and your credit card number, those are all snacks. And the raccoon has a few favorite ways to get into your house. One way is called phishing. This is when the raccoon dresses up like a friendly mailman and knocks on your front door. He says he's got a special package for you, but he needs your key to open the mailbox. You, thinking that he's a real mailman, give him your key, but... He's not the real mailman, he's the raccoon. And now he has your key and can come back later to steal all your snacks. When a hacker does this, they send you an email that might look like it's from your bank or a store you like. It says that you need to log in right away and it gives you a link, but the link goes to a fake website that just looks real. And when you type in your name and password, the hacker steals it. You just gave the raccoon the key. Another way the raccoon gets in is with malware. This is like the raccoon giving you a really cool looking toy for free. I mean, you take the toy inside your house and play with it, but the toy has a tiny secret camera hidden inside. The raccoon is watching everything you do, and he sees where you hide your diary, where your mom keeps her wallet, everything. Malware is a bad computer program that a hacker tricks you into putting on your computer. It might be hidden in a file that you download or a link that you click. But once it's on your computer, it secretly records what you type, including your passwords and credit card numbers, and it sends a copy to the hacker. The toy is spying on you for the raccoon. And then there's the brute force attack. Now, this is the simplest and most stubborn way for the raccoon to get in. He goes to your front door and tries every single key in the whole world until one of them finally works. It does take a long time, but if your lock is simple, then he eventually finds the right key. A brute force attack is when a hacker uses a computer program to try millions and millions of different password combinations on your account. If your password is password123, then the computer will guess it very, very quickly. It's like using a very simple key for your front door. And this is why everyone tells you to have a long, weird password. I mean, you want a key that's so strange and complicated, the raccoon gives up and goes next door. So, the hacker, our sneaky raccoon, has now broken into a big company like a giant digital pantry. They didn't just get your snacks. They got the snacks of millions of people. And the hacker now has a giant pile of stolen information. So, what do they do with it? Do they use it all themselves? Well, no. I mean, that would be silly. A single hacker couldn't possibly use tens of thousands of credit cards at once. That would be very suspicious. It's like the raccoon stealing so many snacks that he can't possibly eat them all before they go bad. It just makes more sense for him to sell them. And this is where the dark web comes into play. The hacker takes this giant pile of stolen information and gets it ready for sale. They sort it all out like a kid sorting Halloween candy. This pile here is just email addresses. Not worth much, but good for sending junk mail. This other pile has emails and passwords. That's a bit more valuable. People can try those passwords on other websites. And then there's the super valuable pile. The ones with names, addresses, credit card numbers, and the security codes. Now this is the good stuff. This is the full-size chocolate bar pile. This information is packaged up in neat little files called lists or dumps. And now, the hacker needs to find a store. On the dark web, there are secret online stores called marketplaces. And they look a little bit like the online stores that you know. But instead of selling shoes and books, they're selling illegal things. And one of the most popular things they sell is stolen data. 
The hacker becomes a seller of one of those secret marketplaces. They create a listing for their stolen data. They might write a description like, 1 million fresh accounts from popular shopping website. Includes usernames, passwords, and credit card info. 90% accuracy guaranteed. Yes, they actually offer guarantees. It's a very strange form of customer service. So, who's buying this stuff? Well, other bad guys, of course. They're the customers in this secret store. One type of buyer is a spammer. They'll buy the cheap list of just email addresses so they can send you junk mail about things you don't want. Another type of buyer is a more serious criminal who wants to steal people's identities. They might buy the expensive lists with all the details, with your name, address, and credit card number, then go online and pretend to be you. They can buy things with your money. It's like they bought a perfect mask of your face and a copy of your wallet. Meanwhile, other buyers might use the password to try and break into more important accounts like your online banking. It's a whole economy of badness where one person's crime enables another person's crime. But how do they pay for it? Well, they don't use a credit card because that would be too easy to trace. The police could see who bought the stolen data and this is where the last piece of the puzzle comes in. Cryptocurrency. Think of cryptocurrency like special magic arcade tokens. You go to a machine, you put in 10 real dollars, and you get those special little gold coins back. Once you have the tokens, you can spend them on any game in the arcade. The important part is that nobody knows which token belongs to you. I mean, it's anonymous money. When a buyer on the dark web wants to purchase a list of stolen data, they use a cryptocurrency. They send the magic tokens to the hacker, and in return, the hacker sends them the file with all the information. The whole transaction is secret. The buyer is secret, the seller is secret, and the payment is secret. It's the perfect system for a secret store. And once the sale is complete, the hacker simply gets their magic tokens, which they can later exchange back for real money in a way that's very hard to track. The buyer gets their list of your stolen data and goes off to cause trouble. And your poor innocent information is now being passed around the dark corners of the internet. It might be used to open a phone plan in your name or to buy a bunch of expensive electronics that are shipped to a stranger's house. It's basically financial eviction, and it messes up your good name like a toddler with a permanent marker on a white wall. The hacker has successfully turned their break-in into cash, and the buyer has fresh material to work with. It's surprisingly a very organized process. These dark web marketplaces even have seller ratings and reviews. I mean, buyers can leave feedback like, Great seller, the credit card numbers work perfectly, A++, would buy from again. It's bizarre, but it's true. They've built a world of criminal commerce that mimics the real world, complete with quality control and customer disputes. It's all built on the foundation of being hidden. It all happens in that deep, dark part of the ocean, powered by the special submarine browser and the magic arcade token money. The hacker is the supplier, other criminals are the customers, and your data is the product. So, now you know. When you hear about a big data breach on the news, it's not just that your information is floating around in the void, it's actually been stolen by a raccoon, sorted like candy, and put up for sale in a secret underground superstore for other raccoons to buy with magic tokens. And congrats, you now understand the secret life of your stolen data. It's pretty weird, right? But you get it now. See? That wasn't so hard. Go on with your day, but maybe go change your password to something a little bit more complicated.